Well guys, good morning guys. Today we are in St Augustine. St Augustine, yes, love it up here. It's about two and a half hours drive from uh, Kissimmee. Uh, beautiful historic town. Take it for a, take it for a walk around. St Augustine uh, claims to be the oldest city in the US. And it's actually home of a fortress which dates back to the 17th century. This is the visit centre. So you get your tickets from here for some uh, excursions and museums. Across there is the uh, Believe It or Not Museum, Ripley's. From what I'm led to believe, I think, unless you can quote me otherwise, that was the first ever Ripley's Believe It or Not. I think it is. We're not going there today. We're actually walking north, uh, about two miles, to a place called uh, the Fountain of Youth. I've seen it before, we've never been here. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward for this. There's plenty of these uh, old old town trolleybuses and uh, you can buy tickets from this place. Right next door to Ripley's. It's not so long since we was here, about six months ago. We came in at Christmas. But it's extra special at Christmas because uh, fill, they fill the city with uh, small lights, little lights, millions of lights. And you can take the trolley bus at the night time and uh, see all the lovely lights. So it's really nice at Christmas. We've never been in the, in the summer and it's really hot. Taking a walk up now to the Fountain of Youth. Just in a shop, antique shop, look at that old stand, Pepsi stand. It used to be a house that's, that's proper classic. Wow. Blown away by the stuff in here. And it's <laughs> wow. Where do you start? We are at the Fountain of Youth. Wow. Apparently if you drink, drink the spring, you will stay youth looking for the rest of your life. We'll give it a whirl, shall we? Welcome to America's first corner. Fountain of Youth. Planetarium's closed. That's a shame. Wow, spring was discovered in 1513. Wow, give me some milk. Can you do it? Do it, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. A bit green. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Wow. Tastes just like tap water. Yes. It's got to be a tap. Mm. Definitely a lot of sulphur in there. Mm. Wow. Prime example of a, a dugout canoe. What the heck was that? <laughs> wow, that was loud. Fire of the cannon. Wow. 
Uh, right, going back to this, this is a, a dugout canoe. It took nine months to make this. It was uh, a ton. It made a ton. This. A normal tree. Wow. Got that all out. Simple. This is the pan which holds a small amount of gunpowder for priming. Drilled into the side of the barrel next to the pan is a small hole called the vent. The vent is what lets the fire from the pan get into the barrel to set off the main charge inside. The part that holds the match is called the serpentine because it's shaped like a serpent or snake. Finally, when I squeeze this long Spanish trigger, it lowers the head of the serpentine down to guide that burning match right into the pan full of powder, causing the weapon to go bang in a very loud way. Now it takes about 40 to 45 seconds to load one of these in our day because the technology available to us simply won't let us go any faster than that. I begin with my priming flask, which is full of very fine gunpowder that burns hot and very fast to set off the charge in the barrel. I pour a little bit of this powder here into the pan, tap on the side of the weapon to seat the powder, and close the pan lid to seal it off. That always leaves surplus gunpowder sitting in the pan lid area. That could do horrible things to me if I leave it there. So I've got to get rid of it by shaking, blowing off, and wiping down the entire area. Now, the gun goes to rest, and I pick up my charging flask. This is the powder that fires the bullet, and it's a lot coarser, bigger grain. Now, if I had either a bullet or a bag of shot, this is normally when they would go down the barrel. But, in a park full of people, it's not such a hot idea to shoot bullets and shot, so we don't do that but I am going to put some wadding in the barrel to compress the powder. The Spanish found this stuff growing from the branches of trees everywhere in the south. They quickly learned that you could use this as wadding on top of shot in a gun barrel. It's going to hit the powder in the pan right in the middle when I'm ready to fire. So to test it just before I fire, I have to lower the match down to the pan lid to aim it to just the right spot. Think of what would happen right this second if I'm doing this and I still had any gunpowder up on the pan lid. All of a sudden my face would be a carbon particle and the gun would go off right into my friends in front of me. My commands will be in Spanish. This will be loud. So at this point, all the youngsters, anyone with sensitive hearing, please cover your ears. Fueron la mecha. Prepare. Apunte. Dispare. And that's how we get rid of our peacocks, one peacock at a time. <laughs> Now, if you think that was loud, got to listen to this. This is a, a proper cannon. And these were once found behind, behind, just behind here. These were all dug up in the 1700s. Wow. Now, the one they're going to fire is that one there. And it's pretty damn loud. Wow. See, this cannon is only made for short range. Now, when Pedro Menendez arrived here in 1565 to establish the settlement of San Augustine in that field directly behind you, he brought with him 20 of these cannons, 20 of these bombardetas, and he lined them up right here, no waterfront. He had a batteria or a battery of cannons to protect. St. Augustine from the camera comes out. 
Here's my advice on how to take the proper photo. Cover your ears. Frame your shot. Okay. Put your finger on no. your on the shutter button. No. Because it is a human reaction. It no. is an involuntary human reaction to play when you hear loud noise. So the cannon's gonna go off. Your body's gonna flinch. You're gonna your finger will hit the button, and you're going to take an awesome photo of the cannon going off quite by accident. And my commands, I'm gonna say para España. That means for Spain. That is your cue to cover your ears if you have sensitive hearing. And for the children, because they still have developing hearing. And my final command is going to be fuego, which means fire. Are we ready for some noise? Okay, let's all move up to the rope so you can get the good feel. Of it. España, fuego. Now, folks, that was only two ounces of gunpowder. You can imagine what three pounds would have sounded like. Three ounces? Two ounces. Two ounces. Two ounces. You can imagine what three pounds would have sounded like. Plus, in those days, remember, twenty cannons. Just bring it down for the next showing. <laughs> Two ounces of gunpowder oil. Oh, wow. Right up through that already burning uh, charcoal, and that air contains oxygen that fire needs to burn. So it's the oxygen that's the secret. That's what makes it get hot. Of course, I don't want to get that piece of steel up to 2,500 degrees. Steel melts at around 22 to 2,300. So I just want to get it hot enough that I can shape it with my hammer. That's going to be about 1600 degrees. streets in the states apparently that's the oldest wood school house in the USA comes a place called uh, Barefoot Bills on uh, George Street Beth and Bills, it's quite nice actually, it's very cheap. Dale's, Dale's got shrimp uh, and fries. I've got uh, fillet, chicken fillet and fries with some coleslaw. Little size of the kids' meals. Sap's asleep, she's missing it all. We'll get some chips from McDonald's. It shows me you some chips all There's loads left there. There's some more mayonnaise. There. And a beer. Oh, I need another beer, I might get another beer. You're driving back. Wow. Wow, well, that was a late night from St Augustine. Got back about 12 o'clock midnight. Great day out there. Great day. Love it up there. No doubt we will back up there shortly. So, well, one thing to say. See you later Orlando, see you later Orlando, we will we'll be back soon. Uh, on way to the airport now and I've got one thing to say. Bye bye little doggy. You will be missed. You will be missed. Bye bye. Take it easy dog. Rest in peace buddy.